And actual sound is the same. I'm still doing my harmonies and you know singing and giving you them good vocals and, and everything, but um, there's gonna be some more maturity in my writing style. There's gonna be more maturity in the things that I'm saying, a little bit more transparency, a little more openness, um, and a little bit more inclusivity, if that makes sense. I want people to be able to relate to what I'm saying and let them know that I'm just like them. Okay. 100% real, 100% of the time. Real Talk 101 Radio. All right, y'all, Real Talk 101 Radio. Another phone interview. I had to get my man on the phone because he couldn't fly out as soon as we wanted him to, but given the recent events, we had to hurry up to get this interview done. You guys know what's going on in the media today. Police brutality, unfairness all the way across the board when it comes to just the treatment of, of not just our people, but people, period. The police are just out here acting wild. So we got something special for you. But first, I want to get into this artist. I have on the phone with me a dope artist. just more to him behind just singing on that microphone. By the name, he goes by the name of A Natural. What's up, brother? What's going on? What's going on? I'm oh, excited to get you on the phone. Friend, new friend of Real Talk 101 Radio, like a brother. We, we, we're going to take this to an, a, another level now. First off, give us the reason why you you, use, you chose the name A Natural. Is there something significant behind your name in itself? There's, there's a couple answers that I have. That The, the answer that I, I like the most, the one that kind of means the most is to me, is if you have music and you have a note that is sharp or flat, you add a natural sign to it, and it brings that note back to where it's supposed to be. So I kind of applied that to my life to mean that whenever I stray off the path that God has me on, that he's that natural sign that puts me back to where I'm supposed to be. So that's, deep. That's, <laughs> that's deep. That's like a bar right there, though. That's deep. <laughs> yeah. So this, this, when did you first start start singing, becoming a singer, songwriter, producer, all three hats? I know you wear all three of them, but what, what did you start doing first? Oh, man. Um, I, mean, I come from a musical family. My mom was a singer. My father was her producer. So I kind of like literally was born and raised and grew up in the studio. Yeah, I started singing when I was probably three and then started singing correctly when I got into high school. I, I've been singing and writing ever since I was little. And, you know, I, I got classically trained through high school and college and everything like that, but I didn't really start doing this, this whole music business thing for real until I graduated college. Gotcha. And in October 2013, released the steamy, controversial music video, an equally controversial last single called The uh, Police. Tell us a little bit about that. All right. Well, call the police for anybody who hasn't seen that video or heard the song. You know, basically, I wanted to write a song from the male perspective because you've got a lot of songs that are out there talking about how a drug is cheated on and the man does it wrong, but nobody ever comes at it from the other side. Women cheat, too. You know, yeah. and I know from yeah. my own personal yeah. experience that, you know, they do. And then we don't like it. We hurt. Our heart breaks, and sometimes we get angry. So, you know, in the in the, in the song, I talk about just the anger that the man feels. And in the video, I kind of show the anger that the man feels. So it's basically saying, call the police. Like, you know, tell them what you did to me, and this is why I'm burning the house down. <laughs> you know. So they can expect to see the other side in the video, basically, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's right. We got to make sure we put that on the website too. I'm, that's gonna be up tonight. I guarantee that's gonna be up tonight. Now, now you actually, you actually starting to transition. Now you can tell us a little bit about I Write Songs Now Volume One. I want to know a little bit about that. Well, for for the last several years, I was a part of a company. I won't say their name, but it was not a good situation, and I got out of that situation this year. Late last year, I started writing some some songs. I didn't know what they were gonna be for, but I just knew that something was different in the way that I was writing. Um, uh -huh. I was writing from a, a much purer place and a much clearer headspace. And uh -huh. because of that, a lot of opportunities to write for other people started coming up. So I, my pen game just got real strong, basically. So I just, I just wanted to keep writing. And this project came out from that, just me being able to write what I truly felt and and write it in a way that people can really gravitate towards it. So that's what and that led into great. That led to greater, greater things now too, right? You, your your name is being buzzed around uh, uh, in some some high ranking elements, Epic, Atlantic, uh, and Zone Four. You you out there right now, huh? Yeah, the Zone Four is on um, Polo Polo Down. That's his company. Gotcha, um, gotcha. Down in Atlanta. I actually um, last year I, I did a, a remake of a Boys to Men song and put it up on YouTube and. Sean from Boys to Men caught notice of it. And oh, you did a cover? He, yeah, did a cover of one of their songs, 
and he, you know, hit up my, my now manager, and ever since then, I've been working, like, just writing for a lot of people. I've been working alongside with Sean and different artists down in Atlanta, so, you know, the whole writing thing has really been working for me now. How do you approach your writing? Do you use a, do you have a certain thing you got to do to pump yourself up? You know, like football players, for instance, they have a, a certain regimen they got to go through before they go out on the field, or, or like you got your, your, your Kevin Hart, so you have a certain regimen that he needs to go through before he get out there and shut the stage down. Do you have something that you need to go through or to, to motivate you to get, out, get, in, get your pen and start creating that magic on the paper or what? <laughs> Honestly, it's, it's pretty sad. <laughs> uh, so I, I, I kind of start off by going on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram and Tumblr, and then I just start writing. It's really no yeah. ritual. I just I kind of veg out for a second, and then I just start writing. Like I usually write better when I'm under pressure. You can't be writing that off of Instagram. You write something off of Instagram. There's gonna be a lot of scattered ass writing around on there. I mean, I mean, you know, sometimes you get inspired. There's a lot of stuff out there. <laughs> I heard you know. that. I heard that. But that's different. You know, I, I ain't heard that one before. I've heard some some pretty unique ways of starting that and people start that magic and start that creative process. But that's the first right there. I must say, I must say. And now, songs about you, E. T. Two thousand twelve in your face, Lucky Eight mixtape. Mix mm-hmm. Yeah. Where, where can we find that mixtape at? Both of them are on my website. If you go to www.anatural, the number four. Ever.com, so anaturalforever.com. You can find both of those projects on there. Uh, songs About You I did for Valentine's Day that year. It was uh-huh. definitely some babies made that night. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> we got I did that with her in rotation, man. Yeah, that was a, a close friend of mine who's no longer with us. Um, his name is Jers, and uh, he and I worked on that project really heavily. And um, and then Lucky Eight was also kind of inspired by my, by my boy Jers. He just kind of told me, just, you know, you need to get a little cocky and start, you know, coming at dudes and stuff like that. I'm like, I'm not that kind of dude. But he was like, you got to just own your stuff. And I was like, okay. So I kind of did a little mixtape thing. I'm rapping a little bit. I shouldn't be, but I rapped a little bit. <laughs> it's kind of getting a little diverse on it, huh? Yeah, it's definitely not for kids. Well, would you agree that sometimes as an independent artist, like on a, on a come up, especially now you're starting to open up or walk through, you already opened the doors, you're starting to walk it through, New doors, uh, doors that you need to be walking through. Is it? Do you agree that sometimes you have to step out on a limb and do something that's not shock and awe value, but more so just unique? You know what I mean? I think everybody needs to try everything once to find out what their lane is. I know my lane is not so much in me just talking about what I can do; it's showing you. So yeah. even though I did that project. You know, the better part of the project was when I was just doing what I do, with just singing and writing. But all the, the, the shit talking or whatever, like, that's just not who I am. And I, I kind of tell people, like, you know, once you know what kind of artist you're trying to be, then stick to that. You know, be, be true to yourself, and then you'll find out what your lane is. So definitely experiment with different sounds and styles and see what really fits, because you never know. You might look up on something that the world might like. Gotcha. That's, and, and that's what I was going to lead into my next question. With Volume 1, I Write Songs, Volume 1, you had mentioned that the, the music and the lyrics that you write detail, like, from your own experiences with love, life, and, and music, just different things like that, correct? Yeah. Okay. Um, you want, to, want to tell us about one personal one in, in particular or what? Can we, can we get that? I mean, this is real talk. Yeah, on yeah. The radio. I'm, I'm an open book, so we'll, we'll definitely do the real talk. Like, there's a song on there called The Great Depression, and... Um, I'm not ashamed to tell my age. I'm 31, and last year when I turned 30, I actually almost didn't see my 30th birthday. And oh, wow. I, I was in a really dark space. I was in a really horrible place where I just felt like, you know, nobody loved me except for when I was doing something for them, you know, whether it was music or money or whatever. Like, I had my own issues, and nobody was hearing me. Nobody was checking on me. But if I was getting a track done for them, they were calling. If I was, in, you know, during the studio time, they were calling. And I got to the point where I was like, I'm tired of being taken advantage of, I'm tired of being used, I must not be good for nothing. And I tried to end it, you know. And then, you know, I, I had a long talk with my mother, I had a long talk with God, and just realizing some things about myself, and, you know, that's where the Great Depression came out of. So you'll kind of okay. hear that, that story in there. You know, on a lighter note, there's some songs about, you know, a couple songs about sex, there's a couple songs about just, you know, knowing who you are and feeling yourself and 
you know, that kind of thing. So That's right, brother. I'm glad you pulled out of that because we need the talent. We need the, the inspiration from individuals like you, which we're, we're going to get into in just a few minutes. But I'm glad you pulled out of it because we needed a lot more brothers like you, man. And, and it just adds to the two individuals that, that you have that know you, uh, mutually, me and, and Lenny, man, we both are the same type of people. And I know a person attached to that brother, man, is a good brother. So I'm glad you, oh, yeah. you're still around, man. No doubt. No doubt. Now, given the recent events, you know, which is what helped us get close to you and find you, I don't agree too well, too well with what's going on with the police Not brutality right. and, and all this stuff going around the world. So we actually dropped a, a, a single for that. It's on the website. You guys, make sure you check it out. You guys are listening right now, realtalk radio.com Check that out. My man, A Natural, has a song, and it's entitled Hashtag One Christmas, right? Yes. And tell us a little bit about that and why you picked that title. Um, You know, the, 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 the world that we live in now, everything is based off of your visual perception. As soon as somebody sees something, it becomes viral. And stuff gets around real, real quick. And I, you know, on Thanksgiving, I was sitting there. I was alone on Thanksgiving because all my family had somewhere to go. And I was happy for the break just to chill, you know, watch TV. But I'm sitting there watching the parade, and I got mad because I'm just like, how can we sit up here and worry about Santa Claus and parades and shopping when people are getting killed, like, every other day? Indeed, you know? indeed. And I just, I, I felt like, it would be a crime if I didn't say something, you know. Um, Lenny and I had worked on um, on his song, Lenny Harold. Uh, we worked on his song, May Day, and we got the message out there. But I had to do something else. Like, I don't want to stop the message from getting out there. we got to keep putting it out there, keep putting, you know, more voices out there to be heard. And I got the idea of doing um, this Christmas from Donny Hathaway. You know, people were asking me, what are you going to do for Christmas? What are you going to sing for Christmas? And I had put a little vote up on Instagram and some people pick this Christmas, some people pick Let It Snow. And then I thought to myself, what's going to make more of an impact? And I got this Christmas down, I produced the music around it, and then I started writing, and I was like, i got to do something about this whole, you know, police value situation. So with the hashtags, you see the name, hashtag all over Twitter and Instagram, and uh, you see Mike Brown, you see Eric, you know, uh, Eric Garner, Eric you see Trayvon Martin, you know. Yeah. All of them, and I was like, "What better way?" If you look at the, uh, the single cover, it's all the names that have, you know, been either killed or, or abused by police brutality with the with hashtag the in front, in the middle. and with the candle in the middle, just so people know. Okay, yeah, it's Christmas, but let's think about what really matters: life yeah. and love, not yeah. shopping and how much you can get. You know, yeah. it's, it's a yeah. different time now. People gotta wake up, so I wanted to make that kind of an impact. And the song is dope. You guys can hear it in rotation. Real Talk One One Radio dot com, man. The song is great, man. I, I love it. I can't wait to just, man. It's dope. I can't wait to get you. I can't wait to get you on the stage. Get some footage of you on the stage, man. Love your voice. It's just cool delivery and everything. We gotta get. You gotta send me that. You gotta send me that EP, man. We gotta hear. You said baby making music. We got to after ten o'clock Sunday through Thursday next. Oh man. Oh man. We gotta add to it. Now let me ask you. I want two more questions before we get out of here. One. What do you find like uh, inspiration for your from for your music and for your writing or both? Where do you find the inspiration from other than <laughs> social media? I mean, like as far as other artists, do you find any inspiration for other artists, other artists that you know inspire you to do what you do? I definitely find inspiration from other artists. Um, one of the things I like writing, you know, I like about writing for other people is that I learn so many different voices and styles from whoever comes in the studio and. Um, it opens me up to every genre of music. Like, if you look at my, my iTunes, I have everything from Beyonce to New York and Jay-Z to uh, Daft Punk to, you know, Avenged Sevens to a whole bunch of rock bands. It's like, like I, love, I love everything. But I also get my inspiration from just the fact that I have a responsibility with my music. Um, my mother always told me that you're responsible for every word that you write. So I want to make sure that everything that I say, everything that I do, it's not just an album filler. It's not just, you know, ratchet stuff that can be played on the radio. It's got to be thought-provoking. It's got to make you think and feel something because music is power, you know. So, yeah. ten year music. A ten year music that you can listen to ten years later and still be dope. Exactly. Exactly. Time right. That's what I want. Exactly. Exactly. So that leads to our next question. What's some type of advice, which I'm pretty sure you might say that, maybe something different, but what type of advice can you give to a 
up and coming artist who who's aspiring to just be to be great or to get over that hump, whatever that hump may be, what what's something that you can give to somebody that may have helped you in the past? Um, I would say the, the one thing that really helped me was to figure out who you're trying to be. Um, a lot of people, they wake up one morning and they say, oh, I can sing or I can do this and I can do that, but they don't know where they fit. And I think as soon as you know what kind of artist you're trying to be, that will help your whole direction. If you're doing music just for the sake of doing it because you like it, then expect not to make more money, <laughs> you know. Okay. If you're doing it because you're trying to be a star, you got to put the work and you got to sacrifice. You've got to invest in yourself. You know, it takes a lot to be successful, especially as an independent artist. we got to work harder just to get ourselves heard. You know, it's not impossible to make it. Right. It's not impossible to make it if you do the work, you know. That's right. So just know who you are, know who you're trying to be. As soon as you figure that out, it's easy. That's right. Easy breezy, man. You guys heard it here. Let everybody know where they can find you, man. Shout out to your social media. Let them know. All right. Again, you can find me on my website. is www.anaturalforever.com. That's the number four. And everything on my social media is A Natural Forever. So Twitter at A Natural Forever. Instagram at A Natural Forever. Facebook.com slash A Natural Forever. A Natural Forever dot Tumblr dot com. Like everything is A Natural Forever. So you That's can find me on there. Find the same way. You tell me, Google me, Google me. Yeah. <laughs> so what can what can people, man? Once once our listeners attached to what you're doing, what can people expect from you from from the future? Um, the next thing you can expect from me, not even really me. It's all the people that I'm working with. Like we got Lenny Harold's project coming up next year. I cannot wait for you guys to hear that. That's gonna blow everybody's mind. Me too, man. I can't wait to hear that. Yo, you you've never heard him like this before. It's gonna be amazing. Um. I have another artist by the name of Cole Ray. Her her project is about to be done. She's out of Brooklyn. Um, I have a girl group that I'm working with named Dame. Uh, they're out of Long Island. Uh, we're working. Me and Sean Stockman are working together with them. They're going to be amazing. Like if you like boys to men, you're going to love this group. It's, gotcha. it's all about giving you dope vocals and harmonies. Um, and there's like twelve other projects that I'm working on too. But in their time, they'll you know, be coming out too. Any any traveling? You coming to California anytime soon? So that's the plan. Um, I'm back and forth between here and Atlanta, and I'm definitely trying to get back out to Cali. I haven't been here since I turned 21, and I miss it. But I love oh, man, Cali. You gotta come back. Oh yeah, you gotta come back. You come out here, we can get to work in, but then we can go out and have some fun, man. But I hope you ever get out here, man. Appreciate you. I need somebody in. to take me to Minis. So what? To what? I need somebody to take me to Minis. It's a soul food spot out in Cali. I forget where it was, but she had the best. Soul food I've ever had in my life. Oh, I think I know what you're talking about. Matter of fact, I'm make sure I look that up. So you come out here. There we go. We going and we're going to Roscoe's. I gotta get me some chicken and waffles. Bro. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, man, I appreciate you calling in, man. And, and, and like I say, you are family now. Uh, uh, yeah. No matter what, we are gonna help push whatever you got going. You're a positive brother, man. Let everybody know we out here. We, we, what yeah. our main goal, like I tell Lenny all the time, our main goal in this world, on this earth, our mission is Real Talk 101 Radio is to uplift the up and coming. And once we show everybody, we, we develop that reputation, show everybody that we out here for you guys, man, it, the sky is the limit. So let them know we out here and this is the place they need to come to. Definitely. We got everything you pushing, man. We want to put it out there. Definitely. Thank you. I, I really appreciate the time. Oh, no doubt, man. We have the interview will be up looking good in just, just a few days, man. I appreciate you calling in, brother. It's 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 slowing down when you get out here. We're going to meet because we're getting on that stage. <laughs> there we go. There we go. All right, man, shout out one more time, social media right now. Yes, every, everything is A Natural Forever. A Natural Forever dot com right. and everything else. Yep. Yeah, check them out. A and wwwrealtalk one radio dot com. You already know the website. Go check out his song. You can play it. Go to his website. You can download it. Check it out, man. We, we, we're trying to start a movement out here, and they try to start a movement out there, too. We're trying to change our people, get our people in a better light, man. Yes, definitely. May they black America. That's right. Real Talk 101 Radio. We out of here. It's not real if it isn't Real Talk 101 Radio. Let's go. Let's go. Why listen to anything else? Hang on, my people. I promise that things will get better One Christmas, life, love and family How much brighter it will
we'll be together.